What up? How's it going? <sighs> Salve. Shout out to Brazil. This is going to be an interesting set of videos because I'm going to be talking about my time here in Brazil. I'm currently here in Brazil. I'm in Goiânia. Um, if you didn't know already, and even if you knew that I'm currently here, you're probably asking yourself, what? When did this happen? Why did you decide to come here? And also, why Goiânia? All right. So I got here at the beginning of November. Um, maybe the second or the third. And uh, I've been here since. I've been in Guayana, and uh, I spent some time in Sao Paulo, about ten days, I believe. And the plan is for me to travel all over Brazil and see it in person. Uh, and also, if I can, stay here, live here, get a visa, and live here. Uh, so let's start with why I decided to come. Uh, I if I ever. When I planned on coming to Brazil, it was always going to be the thought that, like, uh, I'll come here. It'll be like a two or three week trip. And then, you know, I go back home. Uh, and maybe I do that multiple times, right? But I just never thought about that. But I met a friend who's from here in Goiânia. And she said, yo, you should move. It doesn't sound like you really happy where you at. And I, and I wasn't, right? I got depression. I've talked about it in my videos. And I really didn't think about it. I didn't take it serious or anything. But then all of a sudden, one day, I don't remember when. I can't remember when. It was in this, the summertime in North America. It was uh, maybe June, July, August. I just went and bought a ticket. Bought the tickets <laughs> to come here. And so I put a deadline on myself. Well, you got to prepare uh, to come to Brazil. And my friend, like I said, is in Goiânia. So I came here to Goiânia. She told me uh, how it's recognized around Brazil and also uh, how crazy it is that I'm actually going to be here, right? Even people from Goiânia, they asked me the same question, why Goiânia? But truthfully, it's because I had a friend here who was uh, like offering me a place to stay. And it's deeper than, oh, I'm just coming to visit and just see things. It's also a change of life for me. Like you'll see as I talk and as I vlog, this is, it's not just that it's, oh, I'm vacationing, oh, I'm taking a trip. It's a full sort of change in my life, right? Uh, and so, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, me being here. So early on, you're going to notice a lot of it is in the normal vlogging format that you see a lot of traveling YouTubers do and stuff like that. Me coming here, I wasn't thinking I'm going to be a traveling YouTuber. It wasn't until I got here, they was like, hey, are you vlogging? I said, oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, I didn't know how to vlog, really. I didn't know how to talk, like, that, set it up. and Right? Like, when you're trying to do something and you're focused on it and you're trying to learn and be aware of your surroundings, it's kind of weird to, for me to, be, to pull my camera out and just talk to it while I'm walking. Right? Now, to me, I've spoken about this. There's certain uh, YouTubers who I think are fantastic at this especially when it comes to being travel youtubers specifically in south america it's a uh, ace that that nigga like i said he should win an award for for some of the stuff he's done right um for me like i said i got i have videos pictures we're going to show some of those on here but early on it's going to be me talking and as it goes on you're going to see oh the vlog has got better the vlog has gotten better proper vlog all right so <laughs> i got a list how I felt moving here. Yo, you would think a person would be nervous. You would think I'd be like, oh, you know. But I was just so ready to experience something new that the only thing I was worried about is my son, right? Uh, I know the rest of my family is good, but my son, you know, I talk to him every day and stuff like that. Tell you the truth, if we didn't have WhatsApp, FaceTime, Duo, I probably wouldn't have done this because I need to communicate with my son, right? Uh, but as I came here, even on the plane ride and stuff, I was more worried about the plane ride. I was more worried about that. Yo, it took over 24 hours, which, okay, that's not, I, I don't get bothered by stuff like that if, I, if I'm going on a trip. But once we got to uh, the airport in Sao Paulo, it was a layover, about like eight hours, 12 hours, something like that, okay. 
I uh I was ready for that. But then it was crazy. Trying to trying to wait on a plane that was supposed to leave at like four. I don't think we left till like ten or something like that. Or maybe it was like nine or something. Cause I believe I made it here to Goyanya around ten. All right. And so when I got here, nothing felt weird for me. This is what I want to say, because this leads into another question. Well, how does it feel? Is it weird or what are some of the things that you had to adjust to? There's been very little adjustment for me. Some of the stuff, all right. Some of the stuff people just assume like, oh man, the gringo, he wouldn't get that. He, I, ain't nothing out of the ordinary. Plus you got to understand a lot of these travel YouTubers or the people that move, they trying to get the views and stuff. So they're going to be like, a squeegee? You got to use a squeegee to push the water? Yeah, nigga. That, like, that's not surprising to me. Uh, oh, people hug you and kiss you and uh, they're expressive? Yeah, my nigga. I, I lived up in the Northeast. Like, we had people who are, a lot of the population in New York is from outside of the U.S. So that wasn't unusual to me. But also, uh, I'm because uh, I this is for another video but I just want to point out that like sometimes the thinking is gringo but like I'm a black I'm black so a lot of the weight talking loud and all that that's not unusual to me bro <laughs> like I, I know the thinking is like well a gringo is a gringo so in fact it was not an adjustment for me it felt like home I say this all the time people ask me I go nah it felt like home here a ain't been no adjustment for me people like what about the food I love the food. Uh, I think people think we eat McDonald's <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We eat prepackaged stuff, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, there's a lot of that, but come on, my nigga. <laughs> I, I, I was talking about Thanksgiving because I made a turkey here for, uh, for Christmas. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too. I put in work on the turkey for Christmas. But um, somebody said something about like crunched up Doritos on macaroni. And I just found that funny because once again, I'm black and we take Thanksgiving serious, not as a celebration of the pilgrims and all that white people horseshit, that European horseshit that they brought to the Americas. I'm talking about like black people coming together. It's a family event. Any holiday where you have days off, it's not about the holiday for black people in the U.S. So I just want to express that it's about the coming together. And so like we take food serious, like all that shit you see on the videos and all that. That's goofball shit because there's millions of videos of us, you know, cooking and eating proper food. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's like motherfuckers think we just out here. Just we just living off a of Gatorade and McDonald's. Nah. So when I eat PF, that shit good to me. Listen, I've been waiting to eat this because I had seen it on videos a while. I've been waiting to eat it and I and it's the best part of my day. Lunchtime, the PF. All right. Best part of my day. <laughs> you feel me? So like certain things, there's no adjustment like that. My first thoughts about Brazil as I arrived. Um, the first place we went to was a uh, feta because the thinking was, let me just get adjusted, spend two days, get myself ready and we go out. So we went to the feta and uh, once again, this is some, this is something I had heard about. And I had seen on in media, social media, just, you know, films and stuff. And so when I got there, the thing that was, everybody was lovely, especially when they realized I couldn't speak English. You see a smile come on their face, like a smirk, because I, I don't know what the reason is, but it, it wasn't like they was trying to play me. What I because I, I, I know what it's like for a person to try to play you in your face. What it seemed like was like they were interested in helping. They're like, oh, shit. Well. You know, it almost brightened up their day to help and communicate to me what I was seeing, right? Listen, I, at the feta, I had a pastel and garapa. Listen, I fuck with it heavy. I fuck with it heavy. If you, the video is on Instagram, and I'm probably going to post it here. Now. In the pastel? Yes. Mm. I 
I could see me coming here eating this without you. <laughs> Every Sunday morning. <laughs> what is this that you're drinking? Sugarcane juice, right? Garapa. 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 Mm -hmm. This is real good. For me, it's a fried pastry. <laughs> I get the uh, Connie Cajun. I listen. I fuck. I, I fuck with it. All right. But I was sweating crazy. I've had to get acclimated since I've been here, and I came during a heat wave, fresh out of the summer. In uh. In the U.S., right? Like, the I lived in the South, and so yeah, the summer is you know June, July, August. But in North Carolina, Eastern North Carolina, it bleeds in. So I went from heat to heat and I never had a chance to stop sweating. <laughs> and you'll see that in these videos, right? So that's one of the things I had to adjust to the heat. I went and bought a fan. You're going to see the videos on that. My day, my day out trying to go buy a fan. That shit's hilarious. I take pride in that fan right there. <laughs> but everybody was helpful. My, my friend who is my, my roommate has been helping me so much, right? Like I, I I'm going to express to y'all in the upcoming videos, but like everything that I've needed done or communication with, she's been there to help. And on that day, that first day, that sort of laid the foundation of how it's been moving so far. She was explaining everything to me and stuff like that. I had my phone out, but it was so hot. My phone was too hot to record. So I wanted to record the feta and I even asked people, hey, can I record? And, you know, and I got to see all this dope food that people bring in from the farm, whole chickens and that they that they raise and they proud to sell to you all sorts of dope stuff. Um, and then we also bought Piki. Uh, I tried it. Piki. <laughs> As you can see, I've eaten it already, but this I can't believe I didn't know it existed until today. What is the name of it? Peek. 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 I knew it was Peek, but I couldn't remember how to say it. Peek. But yeah, it's like fleshy, but it's, you know, vegetable or fruit, right? <laughs> I didn't know it existed. I tried it. I liked it. I really fucked with it. It's a savory sort of fruit. Right? I never had anything like that. Here's the thing. When you go downtown in Pekin season in Goiania, you smell it all over. And I don't want to eat it. I don't want to eat it no more till next next year. Next year. Yeah, it's 2024 now. Next year we'll eat it. Um yo, I'm looking at myself on the camera because people since I've been here have said, "Yo, you're taller than what I thought you would be." And I'm I keep looking at myself like, "Damn, I guess I do look short on this month but yeah anyway <laughs> uh so yeah i got to experience speaking to brazilians speaking to everyday brazilians not people who have been who are in the hospitality industry or something like that because i'm not here like a normal tourist or traveler and that's that's the dope thing about it for me is that like people talking to me just straight up? Yo, I've had full on conversations with people that I don't, we both speak very little of each other's language, right? And I'm gonna talk about that also, okay? The first night out, it was a Sunday, I believe it was. And this is a spot here, Beco do Cordona. Shout out to Bulasha and Beco do Cordona. We went there the first night, it rained. And from what my roommate told me, when it rained in Goiânia, people don't like to be moving around and stuff like that. So we got there. It wasn't as many people as, as you would think, right? But I got to experience my first little bit of Brazilian culture. It was crazy because I was sitting there, I was drinking a beer and I was watching it. I'm watching the lady dance and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I'm here in Brazil. Okay. Now what I do, I post it on, um, 
on Instagram. Didn't think nothing of it. This will show you how out of the loop I am. I'm from the U.S. and my channel is popular. It has some sort of popularity in Brazil. Um, I believe a person knew me. One person knew me. I was like, oh, that's crazy. What? And so we was there and, you know, it shut down. It was rainy. Not that many people there. A, a young boy and his father who sells stuff at events, they came and they talked. He heard me speak in English. And the young boy, I guess he had been learning English. He wanted to come to talk. And uh, I remember we started talking about anime. We talked about a whole bunch of stuff. And it was like, cool. It was like, damn. Once again, yo, I'm sitting here in Brazil. I got into a taxi, a cab, and they were selling, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't even know what you would call it. They were selling these, but I bought one. Hold on, I'm going to show y'all. So right here, Our Lady of Apare <laughs> Aparecida. I believe that's how you say it. Forgive me. I was told that's the patron saint of Brazil. Or is Oshun? I don't know how you would say that. But anyway, yeah, I purchased that. It was crazy. Um, uh, I just at that moment, once again, I kept saying, yo, I'm here. It wasn't like I was surprised or like, damn, I, I just can't believe I'm here. But it was like, damn, that's interesting. I'm, I'm here. Right. Uh, so I posted this on Instagram. I think I posted it on Twitter and people's like, what? He's here. Yo, in Goiania, people's like the next time you're about to go out, tell us about it. All right. So I tell them, and this is where it becomes surreal for me. I told people that I was on my way and everybody was so cool. People had come from uh, Brasilia, Brasilia. I was like, what? It was people that came over by UFG, by the, by the college or whatever. And I'm like, damn, this is, so I would say on both sides, it was dope for us to meet each other. Um, I didn't expect this. People were joking me like, yeah, you're famous. I said, I'm famous. I didn't understand what they were saying. Cause I'm like, I'm not what? Cause you gotta understand I'm in the U S there's no one. Unless I tell them about it, no one would know. And then people started coming and sharing stuff with me and letting me know how much, how important the videos are. And that's dope for me because I'm not gonna lie to you. I was about to quit. But to hear people tell me how important it is to them, I'm like, you know what? I guess I'll, you know, right? Like, because uh, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that I, I like doing this and I really appreciate y'all. And I never expected this type of love back to be shown my way. I cannot remember the gentleman's name and it pisses me off. And hopefully you see this video because I want you to know how dope it is that you gave me this. Somebody gave this to me and I didn't even know what to say. Everybody was like, yo, I need to see that. I need to see that. Everybody, cause they couldn't believe that someone gave this to me. And I'm like, yo, I haven't been able to listen to it. I don't even have a record player yet, but I really want to thank you. That, that, that's so dope to me. And I'm, for you to share that with me, it's something I'm going to react to on the channel as I listen to it live. I'll hold the paper with the translation, right? Then there's a young artist named Rafael. We're going to talk about that more going forward. But this is all the first week, by the way. He gave me a uh, green screen, but he gave me some artwork. See that? All right. He gave me some artwork that was like crazy oh hold up there's something else and it's fire like i didn't i you gotta understand imagine not expecting any of this and receiving this and you and you drunk and high a little bit <laughs> it was surreal i was like what and shout out to Rafael. Rafael. i'm gonna talk about him more going forward because um he introduced me to something and remember i said this was also about a life change for me I'm experiencing stuff I've always wanted to experience and never really had a chance to. When it comes to art, it's just something that I, I wanted to experience. I never got to experience it since I was a little boy going to a museum or something. 
I got to go to some place called Serta Negro that is fire. There's going to be a video on it, and that's upcoming. But this is like the first week, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who showed up. Of course, once again, when I'm going to things, I'm going to let everybody know when I'm going to be there and stuff like that. I just never assumed anyone would want to know me. I, you know what I mean? And I'm willing to talk. I'll talk for hours as long as there's a translator there. And just so y'all know, I am learning. But it's, uh, I ain't comfortable enough to be speaking it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, let's see. I didn't tell anybody I was here because this wasn't job related to me, hobby related to me. It wasn't like, oh, I'm doing this for the channel. So even people, even people who probably it would have been wise for me to let them know, I didn't let them know because I just thought, ah, I'm going here. I'm going to stay here for some time. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'll let y'all know. Like when I go from city to city, the same thing happened with Sao Paulo. I went to Sao Paulo. I didn't know it was going to happen. It happened on short notice and I should have let more people know. Right. But yeah, uh, going forward, things are going to be different, but, um, let's see. Uh, yo, I know for a fact, if I was younger, I would have already learned Portuguese and been, but for one, while I was learning, I was so busy. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't, you know, but since I've been here, I've been able to soak in more and communicate. And like I said, now it's to the point where oftentimes people are saying sentences. Okay, I understand it, right? Like, I know that sounds crazy, but when you learn the language, that's important. You feel me? Um, but yeah, so that's my first week here. Um, it's not going to be a, every video isn't going to be like a week or something like that. It'll be different time frames. Like there's going to be a video, like I said, about Serta Negro, like, that's going to be its own video. Um, the me and Sao Paulo, that's going to be a couple videos, right? So it's not going to be one, 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 one for, for each week, right? It's going to be just based off of everything. But that first week was just interesting to me because like I said, I had no idea that people would care that much. And I really just want to say, I appreciate it. And I want to meet more of y'all. You feel me? Uh, as I as I go around the country, but yeah, hey, this is the end of the first video. I'm gonna push out a bunch of these. Yeah, we're gonna try to get them out as quick as possible. Hey, next video.